Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to my kitchen. November is finally upon us, and with it comes soup season. And I can't be more thrilled because few things are as soothing on a cold winter day as a nice hearty vegetable soup. So in this video, we're gonna cook in my kitchen and I'm gonna teach you how to make a delicious, nutritious vegetable soup. Better yet, I'm gonna teach you how to do it using the ingredients that you likely already have in your fridge. This is not gonna be one of those concise to the point recipe videos. Instead, I'm gonna at length discuss all the ins and outs of how to make a tasty soup every time. This will ensure that you never waste ingredients and that you're always satisfied. I did just this in a different video a few years back called How to Make a Tasty Salad. And to date, that video has been the most popular video on my channel. So that tells me that there's a need for it, that people are interested. And so I'm gonna see if lightning can strike twice because I want the views. And I also wanna help you guys. And I'm also hungry and I wanna make some soup. Before we begin, I just wanna quickly talk about one other thing. And that is the difference between how Russian people and American people cook. Generally speaking, Americans love to follow recipes. They want a step-by-step -step process, boom, 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 bam, finished product, great. Russians, on the other hand, they tend to improvise more. I don't really know why this is, but I speculate it's because during the Soviet era, ingredients weren't always available. So what good is it to make like a cucumber salad if you couldn't find cucumbers, for example? So Russian people had to get really good at improvising, just making do with the ingredients they had on hand. And so for this reason, I think a lot of Russian mothers and grandmothers, Russian men and beyond, you know, everybody, they know how to cook and make tasty food out of limited supply. In my own cooking style, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> And sometimes people get angry because they want those concise and to the point instructions and they just don't get it from Sergey. So that's a little bit of background about why I cook the way I cook. And the last, last thing that I wanna plug before we get going is this kitchen remodel. This kitchen that I'm standing in. My buddies and I remodeled this kitchen DIY style. I'm very proud of the way that it turned out. It's good for me, it's good for you because now you guys are the benefactors, you're watching food prep videos in my kitchen. And so if you're interested in that kind of subject matter, I'll link to that video below. And without further ado, let's cook some soup. Here's my fridge. I wiped it down a little bit so that it wasn't messy for you. And it's also worth noting that it's been about three days since we went shopping. It's pretty well stocked, but it doesn't have everything that I could possibly dream of. So in that sense, I think it's applicable to the title of this video, how to make a soup with ingredients you already have. And so I'm just gonna start pulling stuff out. We got some tomatillos from the garden. Jalapeno pepper. On the floor, oof. Maybe we'll do a carrot or two. Yams and sweet potatoes, I like it. Uh-oh, he's beeping at me, how do I stop it? Chard from the garden. Green onions. Green smoothie. I'm still walking my own talk, drinking a green smoothie every single day. For those interested, you can also check out my green smoothie challenge on YouTube. I have several of them. I think that's pretty good. Let's start there. Additionally, I think we should throw a couple potatoes in the soup. Maybe three potatoes. And then I grew all these pumpkins in my garden this year. And these little suckers, these blue curry pumpkins, K-U-R-I, these things are tasty. So maybe we'll put some of that in there. Okay, let's see what we're working with here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different ingredients. That's pretty good. So I, I wanna reiterate that I did not go shopping specifically for this video. In fact, three days ago, the last time I went to the store, I didn't even know I'd be making this video. So being real here, and I think for all of you watching, especially those that love vegetables, it's safe to assume that you have at least, I'm gonna say seven of these ingredients, and that's already pretty good. So do not freak out if you don't have all 14. Like I said, we're gonna do a lot of improvisation, and so it doesn't really matter. We'll substitute things. 
And so the next step would be for me to kind of clean this up, make it a little more presentable. I'm gonna do that off camera, I won't make you watch that. And then we just start cooking. The vegetables are clean, it's time to cook. I quickly wanna give a shout out to my buddy Torsten. Torsten gave us this beautiful La Crusette, or however you say it in French, this pot for cooking. When Kylie and I got married in June, we got this from him. And I can't exactly say that it's our favorite wedding gift because I definitely would offend some people, but it's not not our favorite. So Torsten, if you're watching this, thank you so much. We use this almost daily. And so the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it with water and start heating the water. The bigger the pot, the more you'll fill it. So choose wisely. And it's also probably worth noting that this soup stores very well, either frozen or in the fridge. So you can easily do that and then you won't need to cook every day. Maybe we'll add just a smidge more. We can always add a little more later and then we'll cover it so that it boils a little quicker. While we're waiting for that to boil, let's get a little quinoa going. Now this ingredient is very much optional. Uh, but I do find that a little bit of grain, something like quinoa or buckwheat or rice, kind of gives it a little bit more hardiness. So if you want a soup to really fill you up and do the trick after you've been working hard, a little quinoa goes a long way. And so quinoa cooks just like rice. It's a two to one ratio. So for every cup of quinoa that you use, add two cups of water. Fun fact. Quinoa has a wild edibles relative and that relative is lamb's quarters. So when both the plants are grown side by side, it's almost undistinguishable which one is quinoa and which one is lamb's quarters. And so then we add two cups of water because we did one cup of quinoa. One and two. I like to bring this to a boil then cook it on low for 15 minutes and let it sit with no heat for 15 minutes. And then the quinoa is perfectly cooked. So we'll just do kitchen timer. Oh, actually, not yet. We'll let it boil first, then we'll start the timer. Now that those two things are doing their thing, we're gonna work in stages. And so we're gonna move over to the vegetables and start chopping the hardiest vegetables first, throwing them in the boiling water, and then progressively moving to the softer vegetables. Before we do that, let me quickly give you a rundown of all the vegetables we have. We have onion, cauliflower, tomatillos from the garden, jalapeno, uh, some carrots, green onions. Hidden back here are some potatoes and mushrooms, cabbage, beets and beet greens, Swiss chard also from the garden. And then we have a sweet potato and a yam. And last but not least, we have one of these Kuri pumpkins. Mm, this is one of my most favorite things to eat lately. I grew these on accident in my garden. I thought I was growing big orange pumpkins that I wanted to throw at my friends this Halloween so that they can chop them with ninja swords. But instead I got very few orange pumpkins and a bunch of these and it ended up being a blessing in disguise. So I left this one whole on purpose because I want to chop it on camera and show you what's inside. And maybe I'll include all of these ingredients, just a list in the description below. Though I hesitate to do that because once again, that might be a crutch. And you know what? Let's just quickly put a little salt in there. Start working on our bouillon. Salt to taste. We'll talk about how to balance the five basic flavors a little bit later in this video. A little pepperino and cover it up, let it keep going. Now we're going to start chopping the hardiest ingredients first. This means potatoes, carrots, sweet potatoes, yams, beets. You know, you can choose to leave the skin on, you can cut it off. You can choose to cut it in small pieces or big pieces. I kind of like medium chunks for everything. I just find that the texture is really nice that way. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And on this particular day, I'm gonna leave the skin on. I feel like the skin makes it a little nittier and grittier. That's kind of how I feel on this November day. And so skin stays on. 
For those curious, these knives that I'm working with are uh, Victorinox Swiss Army knives. And they have this new Swiss Army modern, mid-century modern collection. Uh, it's not too crazy expensive, but the, the steel is very high quality. So all these knives that you see here are those. And my only beef is with this little guy because it's very difficult to discern which way is up and which way is down. So it's very easy to cut yourself. So if Victorinox is watching, please, please, please address this because I'm about to put a little Sharpie up here and ruin your design. Something like that. That's what I'm gonna go for. Sweet potato, ooh, here we go. So now that it's boiling, now that the quinoa is boiling, we're gonna turn it down to low, take some steam off, and then we're gonna set a timer for 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, we're gonna completely turn the heat off and set another timer for 15 minutes, and then it's gonna be perfect. compost right there for ease of use. One of the most important things that I'd like to convey in this video is that if you start out with quality ingredients, you're going to get a much better product, much better end product that is. And so, you know, it, comes, it should come as no surprise that a lot of chefs, myself included, we specifically seek out very delicious ingredients, raw ingredients that is. So, you know, you can go to Costco and get a Costco carrot, which tastes basically like nothing, or you can go to a farmer's market and get a delicious sweet carrot. And if you use that carrot in a soup versus a Costco carrot, it's gonna affect the end result of your soup. Long story short is seek out really good ripe ingredients it will definitely affect the overall quality of your soup. All right, here we go. In. In. And I'm probably gonna leave, eh, screw it. They all go in. One of my tendencies is to overcook, and Kylie can certainly attest to that, but I'm gonna start adding and adding and adding ingredients. And before you know it, they're bursting out of the pot. This is something I kind of am working on, but it's really hard. So today on camera, I'm going to try to not do that. I'm going to try and make a soup that has the perfect amount of liquid and solid in it. Whether or not that's going to happen, I have no idea. Okay, after the sweet potato and the yam, we're going to do some carrots. And you know what? Let's make it fun. So one of the things I like to do with my carrots is I like to come in here and make little stars out of them. I think that one aspect of food tasting as good as possible is presentation. If food looks beautiful, it's gonna make the eater salivate more. It's gonna make us hungrier. And as a result, I think we're gonna perceive it as better tasting. So doing something as silly as making your carrots look like flowers or stars, I believe has a drastic effect on how the end product tastes. So here's my close up. It's gonna just basically look like that. Let's do a few potatoes next. Again, I'm not gonna peel these because of the reason I already mentioned. And skin often has a lot of nutritious elements to it. For example, when I was researching my Wild Edibles book, I started looking into the nutritional makeup of lots of different foods, both wild and conventional, and I found that garlic skin, for example, has a lot of nutrition in it. And so what do we do when we cook with garlic? The first thing we do is we throw the skin away. And so we waste a lot of that nutrition. So I've been trying to be more mindful of that in my own 
world in my own cooking. And I try and leave the skin on wherever it's applicable. Now, obviously, sometimes it's a texture thing. You don't want to eat skin and like force your, your force various vegetable skin on yourself and others. But sometimes like in a soup, it just adds to the quality of the soup. One of my first books that I wrote when I was a raw food vegan was called Eating Without Heating. And I like to joke now that I, I'm cooking without looking. <laughs> These beets are also pretty hard and thus they should go in the soup sooner than later. But before I chop them up, I just quickly wanna mention that if you're lucky when you go to the store, your local food co-op or wherever, if you're lucky, your beets come with beet greens attached. Unfortunately, most of us, the first thing we do is we chop the beet greens and throw them in the compost and just utilize the beet. In my opinion, that's a mistake because a lot of the nutrition is in the greens. So whereas the roots of vegetables have lots of sugars and carbohydrates and give us energy, the greens are the more nutritious part. So here's one thing I hope to download into your brains in this video is always save the beet greens. You can use them in your soup. You can use them sauteed in other things, or you can throw them in your green smoothies and benefit immensely from them. And it's free food. It's stuff that you would have otherwise thrown away, but now it's extra, so it's essentially free food. I've noticed that some people really don't like beets. And for those people, I don't know what to say, just don't put beets in your, in your soup, I guess. If you really like beets, on the other hand, add more beets. I'm Russian. By law, I'm required to like beets. So I'm gonna put more beets in. So now that our hard stuff is in the water and starting to get soft, it's starting to cook, I think it's time to start building the broth of the soup, i.e. balancing the five basic flavors. And this is probably the crux of making any recipe taste good, any recipe taste gourmet, is you have to balance all of the different flavors that exist. And there's five main ones. These flavors correspond with taste buds on your tongue. And so it's one B and four S's, bitter, sweet, sour, salty, and spicy. Bitter, sweet, sour, salty, and spicy. So if you wanna make something that's delicious and maximally pleasurable, you wanna add a little bit of those tastes into your food. And so for example, the salty in this equation would probably be the salt, as well as some of the beets, because beets, if you just eat a raw beet, there's a little bit of hint of salt there. We're also gonna add a little beet greens and Swiss chard that also has salty elements to it. So our salty is gonna be covered by all those things. Uh, bitter, again, beets can be a little bit bitter. Uh, let's see, we have a little ground cumin, which in my opinion makes everything better. Ground cumin by itself is definitely bitter. And so we're gonna throw some of that in. Start with a little bit and then add more because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So cumin will be our bitter. For spicy, we're gonna do a little onion. And some people are gonna go, oh, I don't like spicy food. Well, even if you're not a huge fan of spice, you still wanna add at least a little bit in because like I said, it's gonna tickle your taste buds just enough that your recipe, whatever you're working on, is gonna be finger licking good. And I am one of those people that really likes spicy food, so I'm gonna add onion, garlic, and jalapeno. Something like that. These little tiny garlics are from my garden as well, the last of the year. And boy, are they mean. They got kicked to them. Ooh, that's looking good. So we have bitter, we have salty, we have a little spicy. The pepper I'm actually gonna leave till the very end because if I were to cut the pepper now and throw it in, it would make the soup super spicy, which I would enjoy, 
but maybe my guests, maybe my wife wouldn't enjoy it as much. So I'm just gonna chop this up later on, timer, and then add it as needed. That's kind of another little tip. The quinoa timer just went off. It's been steaming for 15 minutes on low. I'm gonna turn this off and then set it for 15 more minutes because it needs to just keep cooking, keep you know steaming itself, but it doesn't really need any more heat. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep chopping my vegetables. We'll do a couple mushies. We are also gonna throw some tomatillos in there from the old garden because I don't know what else to do with them. I wanna get them before they spoil. Tomatillo is kind of like a tomato, but slightly funkier. It's often used in salsas and pico de gallos. And I used to hate the taste. They were just kind of gnarly. But slowly and surely they grew on me. And I think that they add like a nice little, they kind of make, take something from just okay to giving it like a party in your mouth sort of element to it. Again, back to the five flavors thing. Bitter, sweet, sour, salty, spicy. Tomatillos in their nature are a little bit salt, uh, a little sour. And so that's gonna add to our bouillon a little bit. The other thing that we're gonna do for sour is we're gonna use a little bit of lime. If you don't have lime, you can just as easily do lemon. You can do apple cider vinegar if you want. And here, we're just gonna do a little lime. The sweet doesn't have to be very sweet for a soup because it is a soup, it's not a dessert. And so some of the carrots that I threw in there were very sweet and that might do it. If that doesn't do it, then we can add a little honey or some maple syrup or even sugar though I typically don't really add sugar into recipes because I feel like we get enough of it in life. One thing that I recommend for people who are a little apprehensive to balancing the flavors on their own is to try your food five different times and each time worry about one flavor. So if, if you don't know if it, for example, has enough sour, you can try your soup once and say, does it have enough sour? Could use a little more. Then the next time you try it, try it again and say, is it salty enough? Is it sweet enough? Is it spicy enough? And in that fashion, you'll be able to train your taste buds to identify what it's missing. And in no time at all, you'll be able to taste it one time. Boom, it needs a little this, it needs a little that. And before you know it, you're an expert. So let's get a little bowl going. And you know, at this point, we've been cooking for a little while. It's time to start perfecting the bouillon. And so you just take a little bit There's probably an easier way to do this. How about with a ladle? Boom. Mmm, okay, okay. It's getting close, but it definitely needs to be adjusted. So it really needs more salt, which I figured because I didn't salt it very much. It needs more pepper. The spice will come later, as I mentioned. This stuff, this organic cocoa aminos by Big Tree Farms. This stuff right here, let's, let's do a little close up. This stuff, it's diabolical. It's, it's like black gold and you can safely put this on everything and make it delicious. It's kind of like a soy sauce substitute that has a little sweet element to it. In our home cooking, we stock up on that stuff and add it to stir fries, soups, salad dressings, and everything in between. Yeah. Organic cocoa aminos. If you guys are looking to sponsor some YouTubers, hit me up. I want in and see what that did.
Oh wow, that's good. So the few little adjustments that I just made have exponentially improved the qualities of the soup. And I can see that it's starting to kind of near its completion. The soup's almost done. And so I better get hasty here and start chopping some other ingredients in there. Let's work on this pumpkin real quick. This is a blue curry. And there's nothing blue about it. It's super orange. And so for this guy, we're gonna carve out the seeds. I'm gonna save these seeds later so that I can plant this next year because I really, really dig this pumpkin. And actually, I'll show you. I'm already saving seeds. Every blue curry I've been eating, I've been saving seeds because in my garden next year, <laughs> I'm almost exclusively gonna grow this in the pumpkin sector. And so the, the skin on this pumpkin, I do wanna get rid of. And unfortunately it's very tough. So you have to be very careful not to cut yourself. I like to slice it in different chunks and then slowly peel it away with a paring knife. Don't have any of these pumpkins, no problem. Use a different pumpkin. Don't like pumpkin, still no problem. Don't use pumpkin. You know, if you don't have sweet potatoes, don't use sweet potatoes. Work with what you got. I promise that regardless of the ingredients that you use, if you balance the five basic flavors, if you work with ingredients that taste somewhat good to begin with, you're gonna have a good end product. You know, probably could have thrown the pumpkin in a little earlier. My talking got the best of me this time, but at the same time, a pumpkin is nowhere near as hard as a potato or a sweet potato. And so it's gonna actually benefit me that it went in a little bit later. I don't think the soup is gonna suffer from it. And now I think we can also start working on our softer ingredients. You know what? I'm not even gonna throw the cauliflower in. I think there's enough other vegetables in there. So instead, I'm gonna do a little cabbage. This is another ingredient that I'm obligated by Russian law to love. And I'm just gonna slice it somewhat thin because it'll diversify the texture. Is that not starting to look like a hearty soup right there? Look at this. It's a hearty soup. And, 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 it's probably time to throw in some beet greens. I love eating greens for that reason. I've made numerous green smoothie challenges. I think it's very, very beneficial for human health. Unfortunately, not all greens taste very good, or at least we like to avoid eating greens by eating other stuff that tastes better. And so I try and pack greens into everything that I'm cooking, from smoothies to soups to salads. You know, if, if we're cooking a pizza, for example, I like to saute greens and throw them on top just, just because it's good for me. So if you wanna follow my lead, you can chop up some Swiss chard, some beet greens, Kale works really nice in this soup. Spinach works well. And so I just throw it in on top. And this also helps build the bouillon as well as the texture. You have lots of different textures. What you really don't want is it to be boiling continuously. You want like a slow simmer for best results. So it's okay to boil your water and have it bubble at first, but then you wanna turn the heat down and cook it slow. Oh, there's our quinoa timer. So once again, the third time I've said this is when you cook quinoa, you bring it to a boil, cook it on low for 15 minutes, turn the heat off, cook it, or just let it sit for 15 minutes. And when it's cooked, when it's fully cooked, you'll see that the little rounds their tails will unravel. So that's how you know quinoa is cooked, when the little tail unravels. We're gonna leave that alone for now. Sergey's gonna give you his green onion spiel. 
When you're working with green onions and soups, I like to leave the tops, the green parts, uh, fresh, raw, because I like to garnish the soup with it. And these little parts with the roots, they're a little heartier. And so I like to throw them in the soup. I also kind of like to leave them whole. I think it looks kind of cool. It looks a little earthy, hipster chic. And so instead of, I mean, you, you could slice them up, but that looks kind of cool too. Let's try the broth again. This time we're gonna scoop up some potatoes or some sweet potatoes, some of the harder ingredients to see how well they're cooking. Oh yeah, that'll do, that'll do for sure. Home stretch, you guys. Okay, so if you haven't figured this out yet, I'm gonna say it. This is not a recipe that you rush through. Take your time, do it slow, enjoy it. Cooking slow food is better for us. It's better for our health, it's better for our psyche. It's a time that we can bond with family and friends. My wife and I love cooking soups together because it's a time we can just shoot the shit and just hang out together. So now that that's basically on its last legs, I like to take this optional ingredient, quinoa, and I like to throw a few heaping spoonfuls in, just like so. Let's say three. You can always add additional scoops to your plate, to your bowl, and just kind of mix it in. Everything about this recipe is adjustable. For example, I just threw three scoops of quinoa in, and now I'm feeling like I should do a fourth, so a fourth one is gonna go in. Yeah, I like that. That's way better. And let's uh, do one last check of the flavors, see if our five basic flavors need any further adjustments. And then I think we're pretty much there. Mm -mm -mm. I think we need a little bit more salty. I think we need a little bit more spicy. I think we need a little bit more sweet. Cocoa aminos to the rescue. And we mix. If people like these recipes, if they want me to keep doing more, I'm happy to share more. In fact, in my current diet and life, I've started to eat meat. Some of you guys will not like hearing this, but it's true. I was a raw food vegan for 18 plus years and then a vegan for 22 years, something like that. And while it worked for me very well in the, in the beginning, over time, it didn't work so well. And I feel much better incorporating animal products into my diet. I still eat lots of vegetables, lots and lots of vegetables and fruits, but I do eat meat. I do eat animal products, so. That's, that's just it. And so if you want to see a version of this soup that does have meat in it, I'm happy to share that. So leave me a comment below and a new video is likely to follow. If enough people comment, I'll do the work. I'll make another soup for you guys. Okay, let's try this broth. Boom, that's it. Mm, the spice just got my throat too. Holy smokes, that is delicious. So now let me quickly clean up this mess that I've made and I'll show you how I serve the soup. There's a few other things that we can add on top that will make it, you know, 
even more perfect. So right now this soup tastes phenomenal. If you ate it like this, I don't think you'd regret it, but it's 95% perfect. And I wanna show you how to make it 105% perfect. So that's coming in a few seconds. I'm gonna make a vegan version and a non-vegan version, and the only difference is gonna be some sour cream. So the third thing I'm obligated by Russian law to love is sour cream, but it's not everybody's cup of tea and I get that. So that's an optional ingredient as well. We have two identical bowls of soup. The first thing we're gonna do is gonna, is gonna be add some extra virgin olive oil. Looks like I didn't prepare well, because that's not open yet. And so we're just gonna give it a little thing of oil, a little dollop of oil, and that will make really pretty little oil bubbles. So that'll give it some appeal, some gourmet-like appearance. Nutritional yeast, here in Oregon, we lovingly call this stuff hippie dust, because we hippies put it on everything. So a little nutritional yeast, also optional. Then we do a little jalapeno action. A little green onion. And for this one, this is kind of like a Russian borscht style thing that you do is you just put a dollop of sour cream. Kind of mix it in there. You could do more or less depending on how much you like sour cream. And look at what it did to the soup. Boom, just like that. And then I like to come in here, throw some jalapenos, a little green onion. And that, my friends, is how you make a delicious soup every single time with ingredients that you already have in your fridge. For more videos that are just like this, but totally different, subscribe to this channel, Butenko Films. Here goes nothing. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Damn.